To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon. Hi students, I hope your exam preparation is going great. Now this is a small video to clarify doubts raised by some of you regarding amendments applicable for November 2019 exams, especially with relation to accounting and advanced accounting. One thing that I want to clarify is all the videos that we have provided to you as a part of the course, they are updated and as per latest amendments. Now this confusion has come because a lot of you are following old study materials and you may not be actually clear as to what has changed and what has not changed. So briefly we'll cover up what are the changes which are relevant for your November examinations. Now the first thing that has changed across all accounting and advanced accounting paper is when you prepare the financial statements of the company in the balance sheet where we used to refer to items called fixed assets we need to include property, plant and equipment. So the first change is you will no longer use fixed assets instead you will use the term property, plant and equipment. This is the, this is the first change. The second change is they have mentioned in item 1 sub item C reserve shall be omitted. This is nothing but earlier it used to be securities premium reserve. Under reserves and surplus we used to write securities premium reserve. This is no longer applicable. Now you have only securities premium. Now this is a change in you know format of the balance sheet. So first change is you will use property plant and equipment. The second change is you will use only securities premium. And there are a lot of changes in relation to remuneration payable to directors or managerial remuneration. Now all these changes in a nutshell if I have to put it across. Earlier there was a central government approval requirement. Now there is no central government requirement. That is the first change. So this central government approval, this part has gone from all the areas. That is the first change. The second change is earlier with special resolution, the remuneration could be double the specified limit. So whenever a company was making losses, you could pay double the limits if there was a special resolution. Now the change is remuneration in excess of above limits may be paid. So wherever there is effective capital based remuneration, let's say earlier it was 60 lakhs per annum. And we had a clause stating if there is a special resolution, you can pay this multiplied by 2. But now there is no such limit on you can pay double. That limit no longer exists. You can pay anything above the limits specified. So the earlier limit of restriction to double the limit that has been removed, that has been excluded. So now what we need to remember, you have the effective capital table with you. In those limits, if there is an ordinary resolution, you can pay as per those limits. If there is a special resolution, you can pay amount exceeding those limits. And then there was a bifurcation between someone having a professional qualification and all those things. Now with all these amendments, that part becomes irrelevant. So you are not required to bother whether he has professional qualification or not. Then. Another change what the institute has put out is in this redemption of debentures chapter where they have just put a statement saying students are advised to refer to the latest chapter. Now what is the change all about? Earlier if you remember whatever was the income on debenture redemption reserve investments this income whether it is interest whether it is gain those used to be transferred to DRR account. We used to transfer all this income to DRR account. But a better presentation would be to transfer the income into profit and loss account because the interest income that you earn on DRR that is not actually being reinvested. So the income should be transferred to PL. So now instead of giving it to DRR, you are transferring it to PL account. Earlier the thing would have been from DRR, you would have transferred to general reserve. But now any interest, any income, any gain on sale of DRR investments, those will be shown or those will be captured in the profit and loss account. The next thing is SLR applicable for your exams will be 19%. Right? Earlier it was 19.25, now it is 19%. Then INDAS is not applicable for your exams. So you will be required to prepare only for the accounting standards. INDAS will be tested in depth when you reach the final level. So these are the specific changes which are relevant for your November 19 examination. Other items which are given at length in your RTPs, they have already been covered in the classes. These points where students had specific doubt as to what has changed in redemption of debentures account or what has changed in the managerial remuneration part, that is what I wanted to clarify. And then there is one more change in debenture redemption reserve requirement where they have brought it down from 25% to 10%. But this change is not applicable for November exams. 
that will be applicable only from May 2020 examination. So for you right now the limits are 25 percent and if you have any doubt in solving the RTP questions you can contact us at the WhatsApp number given and we will be happy to help you. Thank you.